Folks, it is not lost on me on how lucky I am. I get to use some really cool equipment, and this is no exception right here. This flail mower is just bad to the bone. It's a great match for the Kubota. You're gonna see it. I tried to pick a lot of different applications in this video so you can see it in different uses, hopefully relate to what you have going on at your property. Um, gonna do a run upon, gonna do it, show it vertical, okay? Trying to trim the side of a trail as well to really open that up. That's a really hard, um, job to find the right tool for and so with an offset and tilt flail more like this one you can do that that's pretty amazing obviously trimming lanes trimming brush a couple cool things though you're going to see pay real close attention i'm hoping we caught it on camera but i had a piece of firewood drop off uh, out of the back of my ranger last fall and i even though I've been there a thousand times, I've left it there, I've never picked it up. And so I was like, I'm gonna see if this flail mower can run over and chop up that piece of firewood. Sure enough, shredded the heck out of it. So doing around the pond is another one of those, you know, those pucker factors right there. I don't like it. And the one pond I was getting as close as I could and probably with some repetition, I'll be able to trim right, you know, the grass right next to the pond edge and I just wasn't feeling it uh, this day. On the other pond, it's, it's not as steep of a decline down in there and so I was able to get that flail mower all the way to the pond edge and mow those uh, weeds and the grasses clean off there and give it a nice clean good fresh look on there but overall if you can reach out two three four feet whatever it is depending on the mower you have it's just that much more safety uh, and security that you feel like you have and you're not getting that with a brush hog unless you're just constantly backing in back and forth back and forth and we've shown that too um, it is possible to do that and and perhaps in certain applications it's preferred to use a brush hog to just slowly back in back and forth it's just going to be a very tedious task we showed you a funny top mower last year doing our roadside ditch and same concept here with uh, the Kubota and the flipper super obviously it's a bigger mower going to have a further reach on it you know it's just nice i I am not one that likes to take risks on my tractor and at the slightest incline, like a side hill, I, I start to quiver a bit. <laughs> so I like to be as flat as possible and is, uh, be able to reach safely as best I can. And so it was really nice to do that with uh, the flipper from the operator seat. That hydraulic multiplier is awesome just to switch from circuit to circuit and make it tilt uh, how I need to and then reach out how I need to as well. Go slow. You're going to see me going slow, all right? I, I bounce back and forth between third and fourth gear, which is about two and a half to three and a half miles per hour. I run in full throttle um, all the time with this thing. It's going to get you to the 540 RPM uh, rear PTO speed, which is the rated operating speed to have best performance, not just with this flail mower, but with any three-point attachment. A really fun section here is something I haven't touched since we moved in, and it's gonna be kinda of inside this eastern pasture that we have on the south end of it. Hard to access with kind of the pine and the, the evergreen forest that we have going on, but I wanted to clear it out, clean it up. There's deadfalls in there. Uh, there's there's um, cut up lumber, cut up tree trunks that are just kind of sporadically placed about. It's clear cut at some point for the, the, the service line, consumer's energy, but 
it's overgrown, a lot of autumn olive and other briars and, and whatnot that are, some of it's taller than the tractor itself. And so that was very satisfying to take this mower through there. And in a lot of regards, it reminded me of my very expensive, not that this isn't expensive, but my much more expensive Balmolite mulcher. That's on my skid steer. The results from where it was to what it ended up are very similar. I mean, I was incredibly impressed with the diameter of material that this would go through. There was certain trunks there that were four inches and it's not rated to go through four inches, but it did anyways. And it just left a very fine, consistent mulch on the ground. So that is very unlike a brush hog, which would leave wind rows, inconsistent piles and cut areas. Not that you can't knock it down, right? But it's just a dramatic difference, a night and day difference between the cut quality.
I'm most excited to show you about with this particular mower is that tilting ability to go pretty much vertical straight in the air and trim up a trail. Again, that's a job that, well, it's, it's something that we need to do out here because everything, all that growth is just kind of closing in and you can run a mower, whether it's a flail mower, a finish mower, a brush hog along the ground and get that stuff kind of held back at bay. But it encloses in from the top, you know, just like those country roads that are tree line roads, you go down and you can just, it's almost like a tunnel going through there. The same concept on our lanes in the woods too. And so this flail mower in the tilt position can go through and just chop off the vertical stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm six foot tall and I'm standing next to this thing right now and it's, it's at, what do you think, Chris, about seven foot? He says about seven foot, he's, he's, he's befuddled. He doesn't even know, it's, it's up there ways. So it's way higher than seven foot, he says. So that, that's awesome, even better. So taller than, 99% of us out there so it cleans up those lanes so you can walk through there nicely you can go on your ATV or UTV maybe even ride a horse I don't know how tall people are when you're on a horse but uh, the point being it's going to give you those sidewalls cut back there not just what's on ground level and I think that's something that is well you can't do that with a brush hog right you need some really specialized tools this is a specialized tool but it's nice to have that feature and be able to get that done. We did some regular pasture mowing too along the fence lines. Imagine that's a fence row, it doesn't matter what it is, but it just allows you to not have to have your tractor right next to it and feel like, man, I'm gonna run into this thing. You can just keep a comfortable distance away and just let the mower kind of hang out there. You know, if you have branches that are hanging over on a fence row too, and you don't want your tractor to get beat up or your, your head, if it's an open station to get beat up, then you're able to extend out a little bit further away from there, let the mower still do its thing, keep the fence row at bay from your field and get the job done. And more and more, I am liking hammer blades. And that is because you never know what kind of situation you're gonna wind up in and, and what you're gonna randomly hit, right? And the hammer blades are, as the name suggests, just they're just more aggressive. They're gonna take more of a beating, probably put more of a beating out too, uh, compared to the Y blades. If you're only doing grasses, you know, and light weeds, the Y blades are gonna be just fine for you. It just seems more and more that I am constantly in situations where there is not only grass and light weeds and so those hammer blades are just more robust and I think are just going to hold up longer for most folks and still give you a nice clean finish.
All right, folks, so I hope you enjoyed that video. This thing was a blast to use. Just had a really, really good time, and in fact, we're shooting this talking part later on right now between when we shot uh, the mowing footage and now I did a bunch more mowing out here as well. Did some more vertical kind of trimming along um, the fence lines there too and everywhere else. I've just been mowing the heck out. This thing is it's a blast. I just love using it. So I hope you enjoyed it. We do have flail mowers that tilt like this in a smaller version called the Centurion. Okay, and we also have an even smaller version called the Funny Super. Now, any of these mowers, again, do require two rear sets of outlets, all right? So if you have two ports on the back of your tractor, that's gonna be one set. You need to have four ports out there, okay? Uh, one set allows flow to go one direction and back the other direction. So if you want just a hydraulic offset, you just need to have one set of ports back there. You can also get the smaller mowers in manual. So if you don't have any hydraulics on the back of your tractor, you can get those just in a manual offset. You wouldn't even wanna to try to manually offset this. It's way too heavy, but the smaller ones, you can definitely do that. If you're trying to make up your mind on what blades to get, we did a whole video comparing hammer blades to wide blades, so check that video out. If you're still not sure what mower to get, we did a comparison between a flail mower versus a brush hog, so you can go through that too. Or if you don't know what size flail mower to get, just let us know. Okay, just send out an email with your tractor make and model, and we'll match up the right selection, or maybe there's multiple choices you can get to match your machine. So check out what we have over at goodworkstractors.com, not just flail mowers, all sorts of stuff for the three-point hitch and the front end loader. We ship all over the country every day of the week. If you enjoyed today's video, please check out the other ones that we have. We have more videos coming out all the time, but we also have over 600 videos already out there for you to enjoy. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye.